Welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show and I'm so proud to have finally team leader in the show which is one of the fast growing SaaS companies in Belgium, actually outside of Belgium. Uh -huh. So before we go there, the topic of today is a, a question I get every single day is how to find, onboard and train young sales talent. But first, explain what you do. Yeah, um, Koen, not Belgium, but Dutch. Uh, ah. However, I live for quite a bit now also in Belgium, so I feel more and more Belgium. But uh, <laughs> yeah, actually quite interesting topic because that's the only thing where I'm constantly focus on what yeah. in our company but, but as well. your background is you've been opening offices for team yeah leader. opening offices throughout europe we have offices in six scaling countries the yeah. team. scaling trading onboarding yeah yeah top true so it must be a big topic because the sdr sales development trap or inside sales whatever you want to call them is is the way to scale your business in SaaS for sure at the moment, yeah right? i mean everyone is everyone is looking for talent and everyone needs to scale businesses and everyone i mean recruiting all over the place yeah and then of course everyone has the same problem finding the right talent yeah where do you find them? You go straight out of school? Or you I mean, I mean, everyone is always saying, okay, I go to universities, I'm going to yeah. uh, all these places, uh, but everyone is going there. So yeah. how can you stand out of the crowd? Um, yeah, we are true believers and myself as well, really of like trying to get them from school, but by really saying to them, hey, we will coach on board, train you during the upcoming period, six to 12 so months. So you give them value, true value. I'm yeah. gonna make you the yeah. best sales out there. Not the best, but we, we, what we say actually, if you really, if we, if we guide and train you, you at least have the, the, the framework of how to communicate with customers because it's not sales. No, it's about how to exactly. talk and it's understand how you from sell customers. It's more important than what you sell, actually. Hey. <laughs> You've been paying attention. <laughs> ah, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like him already. So, so hang on. So you, you, you do that and you, you go and find them and you do like workshops and you train so how do you select yeah. because then the no, second that's thing an interesting for me because of course you always have this assertive profile of hey i want this guy who already yeah. next to his studies uh was like the the the, the paper boy or selling yeah. papers on streets it's and so like these kind classic. of guys classic but that's not I it's think, like all the all the guys on stage are like i used to yeah but sell. it's fine i mean they can hunt for these we are not looking for these people i mean yeah. uh, looking to the ones i've i've trained and coached throughout the last one and a half year as well like sometimes they didn't have any kind of business background or business administration studies yeah it's it's more about what what i found very interesting those people is like of course a bit of intelligence yeah, yeah because you need course. to adapt quickly it wasn't it more social intelligence like yeah and there you go that's and for you, me one I of mean, the most you, you need to have an understanding of the person you're talking to yeah. and that's why you need to have curiosity and yeah. creativity to come up with the right questions and i think that's the key for a person and if they then doesn't have any experience in business or sales I don't care. I mean, do you do like a test or just to figure that? Or you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, um, yeah. Because we hunt, of course. We make call, phone calls. With, uh, we search through LinkedIn, whatever. And then from that moment, we just do demos, like sales call. And I'm, 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 I'm really pretending to be this well, difficult customer and just get the information out of me. From try the to first understand. call, just to see. Yeah, just like of course you need to. I uh, frankly, uh, yeah. I mean, seriously, curiosity and creativity. That's like really important yeah. elements yeah. and assets in people. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that easy though. I mean, not everyone. I wanted to say, it. but you have to f find your own methodology as a company that to figure out what, what yeah, works for you. Again, everyone is looking for talent, so yeah. Yeah. So okay. So you found them. They start, and then you have a team. That's that's where the problem start with a lot of my customers. They ask me, okay, Michael. So I have an SDR team. How how do I do? You have like one SDR per sales, two SDR per sales. How do you? What's the mechanism? Yeah. How do you set it up? As we say it right now, we have two SDRs, even though we call it inside sales. Yeah. And yeah. actually. We even don't want to talk about sales or IEs or SDRs. You are in sales, you're in customer facing, only you are just the start. And the first, what for us is really important, is like you start, at, you start only prospecting, understanding customers. Once you understand and have this, learned this trick, of course, then we can see if you start also providing demos. And okay, so you really split. The steps. Yeah, and everyone Prospecting, starts at the, at the start. demos. So we everyone. don't even. I'm, I'm not I'm not looking for like sales reps or IEs, account executives. No, I'm really I, looking from the start. I remember having five years ago a discussion with a CEO of a company I was working to was Nasdaq on the stock exchange, and he mm -hmm. said to me because I said I found this really good sales guy. He is an inside sales now, and, he, and the, the CEO said I can never believe an inside sales can be a good sales guy, and I had this endless debate. So you're and saying we say even say the opposite. You are not a good sales guy if you can't prospect, if you can't understand customers, the industry, the person, the problems. 
I mean, okay. we so don't... I actually believe that too. That's one. But two, there is a big difference because some people are just not good in front of other people. Like the physical standing on a stage, uh, you know, doing the presentations. All sure, that. I, sure. I, I think that's for me one of the balancing. What, what's the tipping course, point it, for you? It, it, when do you know, okay, this person true. is ready? But that's, that's true. But the only thing is, of course, looking also to a kind of business where we are in with SaaS, with high volume, with scale-ups. I mean, it's all online, not face to face anymore. So yeah. I see you indeed, avoid all even we don't customers? do we can't we can't. I mean, it's not affordable for our market as well. Unless it are really big deals. Yeah, but that's not you have that's a point? no, but that's actually a very interesting thing. And that's where I'm also a true believer looking at the SME market because we are really yeah. focusing on SMEs. Yeah. And yeah. like 95% of those SMEs are one to 10 employee companies. So really micro yeah. SME. And that's very interesting because then you have high volume and you can't no. go physically to the, the person. The one question, I mean, with a lot of the scale-ups that I'm helping, there is always this intriguing thing that comes back is a lot of them still want to send sales. They, they all want the sales guy to come. They always want somebody to yeah, come. But that's, so you basically no, say, but that's no. A, that's the same thing. That's, that's the belief of that person. And I mean, yeah. you have to get into this mindset. Again, you need to understand the emotions and what yeah. is going on in the person. And then explain, hey guys, it's not possible. And I think we have a face-to-face -face communication. And until now, I really find it actually very attractive. And I have a good feeling. I can understand you. I see that you are also found, uh, feeling confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden, there is no need for this physical meeting. Mm -hmm. Also, they know, especially those SMEs, which is mostly small companies, business owners and stuff, they don't have time for all this. Because then they no, need no, to prepare, physically go there. It takes too much time. Yeah. So they want, it's always in a rush. Yeah. Limited amount of time, limited span of attention. So you so also actually go quick. tune the whole system around, let's say, 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, the whole story needs to be done. Story yeah, demo, I mean, uh, just a prospecting, do. discovery, qualification call, 50, 20 minutes. I mean, a sales demo really um, is actually 30, 45 minutes. It's a 60 minutes demo. But we always, again, start reconfirmation about, okay, what did we... And what we discussed yeah. in our previous call. Yeah. And that's the only thing, of course, also in our SaaS sales. I mean, we have two sales reps, like inside sales, sales still prospecting and then yeah. presenting demo, trying to come. But the sales, in your case, is not going outside. No one. No one. That's, I haven't heard that. Yeah, only me. I, I mean, I have to fly to all these countries, yeah, yeah. but that's the only thing. But I'm, I, I, I'm Because I, I had a blast. discussion with Chopet a few years ago where yeah, they actually said, at what time do you send the sales? Michael, they were doing really large deals yeah, but all on the phone. But, then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but really large companies still will say, I want to see you. No, yeah. I just find it intriguing. I'm looking because my dream scenario would be if I can do it as a company all inside. Basically, I'm scaling way faster. Yeah. It's less no, cost than I'm losing all the But there the you money. go. But I am also still a true believer of the physical contact. We can it's a moment. relationship model. I, I mean, let's say I also did, when I did sales uh, as well, like... So already two years ago, even though I do sometimes a few calls. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, last week I had my meetings as well, but like a very few, like not like on a constant level. But um, yeah, the moment that you're really talking to like a bunch, like three DMUs, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I would like I I I would feel, and that's yeah. that's the real still thing still. Especially when you get into larger amounts. Yeah. yeah. Then then the negotiation, saying the amount and the art of like putting context around I mean, the product. That's an sure. I mean, the first couple yeah. of calls, discovery and maybe yeah. first product demonstration and how that fits, it's fine remotely, I think. Mm -hmm. Online, everything is like fine. But when it comes to really like um, negotiating and trying to uh, start a collaboration at that point, especially when it's high volume yeah. contracts, that's a bit different, of course. Quick question while we're at it. So you have, you start prospecting, then you do the demos. Yeah. And then you sell. It goes yeah. to customer support. Yeah, it's actually because we have like service. overage like sales cycles of 20 days. High volume. So prospecting right. and we do inbound marketing. We don't do outbound. So it's like completely different type. We call it really a machine. I it's mean, very marketing oriented. It's fully out marketing. Fully. I mean. So yeah. no outbound. No, no at the moment at all. You, you don't hear that a lot. No, no, no. I mean, we truly believe in customer centricity and trying to really get into the mindset of this customer. And that makes hopefully f through like offline, online campaigns that the customer yeah. said, hey, Let's see what they can offer. And from that moment... So do you then also focus per industry? No. Would yeah, you say, because I have a lot of discussion, should you focus your team per industry? Should yeah, you but there horizontal? is a challenge. There's a challenge depending on the market. I mean, looking to SME markets, small, especially small SME markets, yeah. you cannot say like there are three main verticals or industries or markets. You, it's, no, it also research shows that, I mean, it's a bunch, I mean, a company of two, three people that can be a consultancy company, but it can be a really but different. But to scale some companies, what they would say, just to counter mm -hmm. it, say, let's, let's imagine Horeca, everything that's bars and all of sure. that. Sure. Yeah. 
they're, they're massive. So there are like conglomerates of industries where, and then you could say, because the story, what they need is always the same thing. I focus one of my team members on tak, 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 mm -hmm. that whole market. You're mm -hmm. saying, no, it's very horizontal. We don't care. Don't care. We will never say about it. Yeah, no, no, don't care. No, no, don't get me I, wrong, I, of I, course. I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking about No, but it's, it's again, and it's also, I mean, what I found really interesting, uh, the other month I was in San Francisco on Saster, a big SaaS event. Yep. And um, I, I got there to talk with Storm Ventures, one of those yep. big VCs over pieces. there, yep. really big uh, IPOs with Marketo and stuff. And, 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 and they said, actually, the really, really interesting thing of you European companies and SaaS companies, scale-ups, instead of Chinese or American ones, are the fact that you guys are focused on process, like mm -hmm. also where we're talking about now, yep. like onboarding, duck, 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 education duck. and stuff, yep. but also being very uh, specific on the market, like, Americans used to, and also Chinese used to say, okay, let's try to all the market and throw in a lot of money. Yep. But we have specifically market focus already on verticals. Is and that because of the language thing? I sometimes wonder because we, I mean, look at Belgium with the three language, let's say two languages that really matter at the moment. And then you go to France, you need to have you translate. I mean, it is tougher than US. Simple for that. sure, for sure. You need the local guys to do, talk to the local people. But right? that's actually, that's, that, that's my problem of being traveling to all the yeah. countries. We really believe we want to be close to customers. You and have they to talk speak in their own language. language. Exactly. And there maybe is the next, uh, maybe an interesting one also, just follow up on what we were talking about, is like, how can you, if you scale your company, and at the moment we have like more like uh, around 40, 45 reps, uh, inside sales, sales. Um, how can you maintain coaching, training? Because yep. I'm truly a believer of training and coaching. Yep. Constantly, yep. frequently. I, I agree. And, and know where are we now, where are we going, hitting in six months, and how are we going yep. to get together? If you, for instance, uh, myself, I'm very uh, much on coaching. I'm always available for all our reps through Europe. However, uh, it's not scalable. I, I wanted mean, to say, you have a scalability. So, yeah. so what I found really interesting is like peer-to-peer -peer trainings. So okay. what we set up in, in the company as well is like every, we, we start that every week, but I will soon start to notice that people, hey, oh, every week training, I say actually preferably yes, but reps, focus on day-to-day, -day, focus on closings, you know how it goes. Mm. Um, those alpha months, oh, alpha, alpha months. But uh, no, we do that only monthly basis, which means always one person is uh, connected to another, assigned to another rep from different country. One is mostly focused on prospecting, the other on, on like closing mm -hmm. and demoing mm -hmm. or maybe both. And on a specific topic, they need to trade each other. So they really need to coach on specific and they, fundamental elements of sales. Yeah. And of course, we need to get, uh, maintain and guarantee quality. Yeah. But in this way, it's also a very interesting thing to... Uh, One of the things that I, I started also changing in that context is a lot of the team meetings I see are only reporting style. And I said, when you get people together, you need to make it a training moment. You need to make it a coaching moment and the reporting you should do individually or a breakout. This is a different We don't story. have to look at numbers because numbers are in the system. We can look at numbers exactly. at any time. I said, guys, exactly. really go away from forecasting meetings over and over again, team meetings, closing, pipeline reviews. Come on. I always said to my manager, I said, hey, look at my pipeline. I mean, everything is it's up there. to date. Of course, if it's not closed, it's not closed. Yeah. And there's a reason. But, and know, hopefully the, the reason is there. The reason why it started is because most sales guys just don't fit it in properly. Because the old school sales is but like, there, I don't need but, to see around to but, sell. But, but right? this, is, this is the interesting thing. Again, coming back to the end, there's these questions of like, who are we looking for in sales? Yeah. If you have not maybe the alpha man sales guy, which we always talk about in sales, yeah. sales is changing. Which and both of us, we are not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, uh -huh. <laughs> won't say. But, yeah. we'll be, uh, but we have also like those, those, those like I said, creativity, curiosity, girls or guys and they are so much focused on process we are really focusing on process so you see even like deal assessment as we like to call them really written down step by step every touch point is that. written there you have that tack 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 they like need the it otherwise they get a clap in the face the blueprint of your yeah yeah i mean of course there will always be exceptions and people who don't fill it out that very precisely mm. but if i see throughout the company as well like many are following it very strictly Yep. And that makes a lot of difference also to your customer. They say, hey, how did you know all this information about me? Hey, a week ago, you talked about the D colleague. And yep. uh, I said, hey, come on, it's just basic documentation. Structure, it's a process. Gives, yeah. Structure gives peace of mind for people. Yeah, but I always, uh, I'm always saying, uh, okay, it's, everything has to do if, if we have a call um, or a meeting. It's come about preparation, yep. fine execution with blueprints, and a right follow-up. Otherwise, no impact. No. And that's, that's, that's a process. But... 
Perfect. We're going to stop here, otherwise we're going to keep talking for a whole day. We have more than we enough can't. topics now. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you like what you've heard, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for a lot more. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you very much.